State lawmakers say dark streets are shining a spotlight on a growing issue. St. Paul says the sharp rise in copper wire theft cost more than a million dollars last year, and the city says they're not alone. As our Barrett Leone explains, lawmakers believe they've come up with a solution to stop the thieves. St. Paul city leaders say it's a constant battle. Our parks and sidewalks may be dark, but it's easy to see the need for legislative action. Thieves targeting green lamps, prying open the access panel, and stealing the copper wire inside. People are stealing copper because a small number of businesses are looking the other way and not asking questions when they buy stolen copper. And that's fine. If they won't do it, we will. It's why lawmakers are pushing to make it illegal to sell copper without a state-issued license. If taking the wire becomes something that's worthless to you, there really is no need for you to take it. An effort supported by top city leaders. In some cases we've seen recently fixed or replaced street lights that were targeted and stripped literally the very next day. Now, in the last year alone, the city of St. Paul has spent more than $1 million repairing and restoring gutted street lamps and traffic signals. City leaders say they're not alone. That copper wire theft is not a St. Paul issue. Copper wire theft is not a metropolitan issue. It's an issue that's impacting communities all around our state, uh, communities of many different sizes. Beyond cost, lawmakers say darkened streets pose a safety issue. Some say stolen wires contributed to the death of Stephen Wirtz, who died after being hit by a car on a street without working lights last year. That was the moment that I realized that copper wire theft is more than a mere inconvenience or a perpetual infrastructure expense. It's a public safety crisis. In St. Paul, Barrett Leone, WCCO News. Electricians would be eligible for a state-issued license to sell copper, and residents and businesses could also recycle the metal for free.